going to give you a couple of strategies that you can use, as well as some overviews of what those terms mean and how they connect. So your first thing I want you to do is take a couple of minutes and look at this picture. And I'm gonna ask you a few questions about it. Morning, you can, what's going on in this picture? Feeling the music? Thank you. The second question I have, what do you see that makes you say that? What more can we find? So now that you've looked at it and you've thought about it a little bit, take a closer look. What more can we find? So what we just did is something called VTS. VTS stands for Visual Thinking Strategies. The first question that you ask is what's going on in this picture? And in the process of VTS, you're trying to get your students to really unpack what they're seeing. It's very similar to close reading, right? You read it once, and then you go back and try to get more depth. It's the same with this visual thinking strategy. You look at it and say, just off the top of your head, what's going on in this picture? It doesn't have to be technical. It doesn't have to be deep or profound. Just what do you see? The second question pushes that thinking a little bit farther. What do you see that makes you say that? So now they're moving past just their quick observations and trying to make a few more inferences based on what's actually in the picture. And then the final question, again, pushing them to really analyze what more can we find? And when you use the strategy of BTS, it's important that you give students an opportunity to share what they're noticing but you don't give any specific feedback of, yeah, I agree, or wow, that's a great noticing, and you just repeat what they're seeing. There's no right or wrong answer in this process. So it's a way for students to get introduced to art and feel comfortable with sharing what they're noticing instead of feeling boxed out or nervous about, oh, I'm gonna get it incorrect. So we figured we'd give you, at the end of our session, two more strategies to help you figure out how to implement arts integration into your classroom. One of the strategies we're going to talk about today is the virtual field trip. I did want to state that not only are we not expecting students to be professional artists, we're not expecting you to be a professional artist. Everybody is artistic and creative in some way. And it's about, like Aaron was saying, it's about finding the approach that works for you. If you're not a painter, if you're not a dancer, maybe you love cooking. And when you put together a meal for your family, that plate is artistically bound with colors and fresh, vibrant vegetables and it's the fruit against the beautiful sauce that you drizzled on top. Anything is artistic. It's in the approach as to how you find where you want your art focus to be. Maybe you're a decorator and you like your house to look beautiful and that's where you find beauty in the world. So I just want you to open your mind and feel like anyone any teacher can find art in their everyday life and use that within the classroom so that kids can see that we're all artists. We all have the right to access an arts education. Okay, so as a classroom teacher, one of the first things I learned about pandemic is that kids like to hide. They run away behind their screens. Sometimes they point it up at the ceiling. Sometimes they tell you, my mic's broken in the chat. And my video, oh, my video is not working at all. And I know that my technicians have worked with them to make sure that everything's going. So the question is, why are they hiding? And how can we pull them out so that we have that great interaction again between teacher, student, and peer to peer? Let's get these kids talking. Well, we gotta get them to feel safe and to feel like they're part of our classroom community. And that's where the socio-emotional learning comes in. Allowing them through art to feel like they're being seen, they're being heard, and that they are part of a strong unit. So one of the things that I do to help build that bridge with the kids is called the virtual field trip. If you went to the English language arts training this morning, you had um, an opportunity to see how elevation training does that as well. 
but I want to give you a, a sample of how you might modify this for your individual classroom, making it your own and personalizing it for you and your students. So we're going to look at what I call the Monday Fun Day. Here on this PDF document, you have a sample of some Monday Fun Day field trips that I've done with my students. For example, we've explored space, we've shared our pets and then gone to the zoo, we've gone under the sea to the aquariums, to farms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so scientists, you can see how you might be pulling in some of your scientific phenomena, artists, we might be going to different museums of art, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So history students, we might be looking at different museums. Or you can physically just go take them to a beautiful adventure somewhere in the world. And as we go on these field trips, we wanna be thinking about how can we incorporate our key vocabulary of the arts core standards? How can we talk about shape, line, and design as we're looking at nature, as we're looking at beautiful places, how can we examine color, photography, movement, lines and shapes that we're seeing within the architecture? One of the things you can do on a virtual field trip is really use the technology to your advantage, allowing the kids to take Google Street View and walk through a city, walk through a theater or a museum and click on links that help them to see more information. Now I wanted to talk about elementary versus secondary levels to how you guys could differentiate so that it's really working for your classroom depending on which level you're teaching. At the elementary level, I wanted to tell you a story about how to do this in a scavenger hunt style. So my husband teaches French at the high school level, which means that he's working on French once, students who've never heard a single word in French before, all the way up through AP students. And so to help those students who are just acquiring language, and I noticed we have a kindergarten teacher with us today, and some of our elementary students uh, and teachers as well, first grade through fifth grade um, in the chat. I noticed that one of the things I saw him do in this virtual field trip style was to get the kids up and moving scavenger hunt stuff. Now, of course, middle school, high school, you can do this with your kids too, but it might look a little bit more inquiry based as Amanda was talking about with our um, Museum of Art docents that you can go to. So elementary level, this is what I loved. In order to teach them colors, for example, he grabbed a bunch of pens and said, okay, bleu, repeat, bleu. And we went through all the different rouge, rose, and then he said, okay, now, I want you to get up and I want you to go find something blue, blue. And off the kids went, they ran all around their houses, they brought back all these different objects from their house. So we get them physically moving, right? Those are our kinesthetic learners. We get them connecting visually, right? With the scavenger hunt, I'm connecting the concept the teacher's talking about to something I can find in my own house. And I'm personalizing it because I'm engaging in the lesson. I'm getting up, I'm moving, and I'm finding something that is meaningful in my own house, and now I'm sharing out with the group. If you remember back to those preschool days, a circle time, show and tell, it's like a, a more grown-up version of show and tell, but it gives the kids access to some prior knowledge. Okay, I'm connecting to what I have in my household. I'm connecting to my new vocabulary, and now I'm talking and I'm sharing because I really feel part of the lesson. I feel part of the community the activity, and it gives me something I personally want to talk about. Now, at the secondary level, it might look a little more like this. Let's say, for example, that we're going to send them to learn about space. You might spend some time with the KWL chart, find out what do you guys think you already know about space, and then suss out a lesson, give them some background information, connect to some things they might already have, in their lives. For example, I brought in Toy Story and talked about Buzz and Woody and their relationship and the silliness of Buzz trying to attack Zerg. And then I offer them a couple of slides to go take a look at. So they can go look at slime in space with the Nickelodeon site. They can look at um, different observatories and exploratoriums and figure out some information about space. Now, the next step is I ask them, okay, well, what do you want to learn? 
now that I've explained a little bit about the topic, and we've looked at the websites that you're going to link to today that you're going to go do your own inquiry-based research on, what do you find interesting? How can you access something that you want to learn about? It's not what I want you to learn, it's what are you interested in? And that gets them engaged. So that is right here, a KWL sample. This is what a finished product might look like, where the students are finding out what they already know, then what they want to go find out, and then the research piece. So now I'm going to go allow them some asynchronous time to do the research and then bring back key information that they found on their exploration that they can share out with the class. And that learn piece you can do in a variety of ways. In the sample here, you can see that the students came back and they wrote out what they were sharing. And some of the students orally presented their information while other students recorded. And then another way you can do this is through screenshots. So students can then take a picture of what they've learned and turn that into you along with their exploration of what new key concepts they found that relate to this topic. So you can check for understanding and you can assess if they've been able to spend their time wisely and that they're connecting the material. Now, the next piece here is an extension project. So if they're really getting into a certain topic and they're driving the instruction, then you can have them create their own choice board. So this allows them to then create an extension project in which they're talking about their arts key vocabulary, they're talking about what they've learned from the unit, the lesson, and they're showing you their project in a project-based learning style. Now they're more engaged because they get to pick which choice they wanna do. So for example, if they feel like they would best be able to show what they learned by creating a song, they might do word choice one, three. If they're more of a writer, they might wanna create a short story. So they might do word choice one, C six. So it gives them a variety in order to access a different points of interest level. Going back to our space, for example, I wanted to show you some projects of what you might find as an extension activity, okay? What kids can do when they start building together these concepts of curriculum and arts. So this is a sample project from space. What I love about this is that it's multiple mediums. We're layering, we're looking at perspectives. We're looking at use of paint and splatter versus the texture of the paper and the water. But it, it's here, it, it's all about art, right? It's art mixed with my topic of space exploration, right? When I took the kids to the aquarium, one of the projects I got back was a nice layered piece. Okay, so again, we're using different mediums. We're using paper product. We're using ribbon and glue and glitter to form the sand. We're using different textures. And then we're using our drawing skills in order to create this picture and make it more detailed and realistic with the shapes and lines that are built in. Okay, so layering is a really nice technique to help them to be able to take what they've learned, conceptualize it into a physical project for you. April, can I jump in for a second? As you're saying all of this, it's reminding me I attended another webinar on arts and social emotional learning. And one of the presenters pointed out that our students don't get a lot of choice right now. They're being told what to do, when to do it, what they can't do. They're not allowed to have things going on, right? They have to have their cameras on. They can't do this, they can't do that. And so by giving them that choice board or those options to express their knowledge in a way that makes sense to them, it's really empowering them when they don't have a lot of choice right now. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, that's, it's a very important way of acknowledging our students and helping them to feel more connected to us by giving them that choice, that freedom to self-express is so important. So what I love about this virtual field trip is that you're really looking at multiple curriculum points and you're bridging across disciplines. So you're talking about mathematics, you're talking about 
arts core, you're talking about English language arts strategies, you're really pulling in multiple disciplines. Right, let's look at one more strategy. And then we're gonna give you some time for Q&A. So the next thing I wanted to share with you is one of my favorite moments from pandemic. When I was teaching the sixth grade elective wheel, we came together as co-teachers and we started thinking, you know, what can we do to really engage the kids? Like James was talking about, how do we engage students and keep them entertained, keep them coming back for more, keep them wanting to hear more? And one of the things we came up with is the guest speaker. Just because we're in virtual distance learning doesn't mean that we lose all of our access to community. This is really a time where you can say, the sky is the limit, where I can go to my community, be that artists who are local, artists who are national or international artists and say, I would love it if you came to my classroom and shared your life experience. Because sometimes our kids get tired of staring at the same face every day, right? <laughs> they see us so much that it's fun to have someone new bring in their energy into the classroom. Now, when I worked last year, I thought, okay, who are my favorite all time? I wish I could see these people in real life and have a conversation with them. I thought, well, I'm just gonna give it a go. It never hurts to ask. And so one of my favorite moments was when a YouTube photographer, um, Jordan Matter, who is now famous for his 10 minute challenges, but I've had his books for years on photography and dance coming from a dance background. I went on the internet and I said, okay, how am I gonna get in contact with him? How am I gonna get his email? What am I gonna do? And I just started searching and I found a site where he had actually asked a Broadway actress if she would pose for him in his first book, Dancers Among Us. And I emailed him and I was hoping, I don't know if this email is gonna be real, if it's still working or not, I'm hoping. And his secretary gets back to me and says, April, he wants to do it. Pick a day, he'll come to your class. And I was geeking out. Oh my God, famous, famous photographer. Oh, oh my God, he's gonna talk to my students. And it was amazing. The kids were so excited to have someone who could tell them, one, artistically, what is it like to be a business owner, to be a YouTuber and make it work, to be successful? But also, too, what's it like to be a photographer and work with these famous dancers, famous acrobats? And then three, now, how did you parlay that into writing a book and getting published and being sold worldwide? So it, it really gave the kids multiple access points for artistry. The second uh, artist that I had come in that I really loved from Pandemic Experience was Rory O'Malley. So once people heard that I was doing this virtual guest speaker experience, artists started contacting me and saying, I want to be a part of this. Artists out there in the community are dying to share their art with us. You know, right now in pandemic, there's, it's very difficult for artists to feel like they're being able to be out there and they want to support teachers. They desperately want to show us that they care. And this is one way that you can allow the community to really give back to us as teachers and share their great knowledge. You can poll your students and say, who, hey, who are you interested in? Who, who would you love to see, right? I started with who I wanted to talk to.